Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In the last video, we have seen how to load Llama 2 open source model for inferencing using Collab, how to use device map parameter and load the model into CPU, GPU, and both, and also noticed that it took approximately 30 gigabytes memory. In today's video, we will learn what is quantization, how to load quantized models using BitSandbytes library. Let's get started. What is quantization? Quantization is a compression technique that reduces the memory and computing power required by large language models. The process of quantizing a large language model involves reducing the precision with which weights are represented in order to reduce the resources required to use the model. It is an optimization strategy that converts 32-bit floating point numbers, such as weights and activation outputs, to the nearest 8-bit fixed point numbers. This results in a smaller model and increased inferencing speed. For example, a large integer like 1000 requires more space to represent it, compared to a small integer like 1. Similarly, it requires more space to represent a high-precision floating point number like 0.0001, compared to a low-precision floating point number like 0.1. The benefits of quantization include reduced memory footprint, improved inference performance, and it makes LLMs more accessible for users who may not have access to high-end GPU. Let's look at how to load a model with quantization technique using BitSandbytes library. First, install BitSandbytes library. This library is a lightweight wrapper around CUDA custom functions that include 8-bit and 4-bit optimizers. This library is only compatible with GPUs, hence it is not possible to quantize models in 8-bit or 4-bit on a CPU. If you have a single GPU with limited memory, then this option of loading quantized models with bit sandbytes would come handy. For loading models efficiently in CPU, we have a different technique which we will go through in a while. Let's import bit sandbytes config from transformers. Since we are loading the model with quantization, let's take a slightly bigger model, that is 13 billion model of Llama 2. Let's load the tokenizer of this model. There are many parameters that we can use with BitSandbytes library, but the most important parameters are load in 4-bit and BNB 4-bit compute data type. The load in 4-bit parameter specifies that during the quantization process, the model weights or activations are quantized to be represented with 4 bits. The BNB 4-bit compute data type parameter specifies the data type to be used for computations during quantization when working with 4-bit values. In this case, it's set to torch.bfloat16, which is a 16-bit floating point data type offered by the PyTorch library, designed to provide a balance between the computational efficiency of lower precision, such as 4-bit, and the expressiveness of higher precision, like 32-bit float. This data type is particularly useful in scenarios where you want to maintain some level of precision, while still reducing memory and computational requirements, compared to full 32-bit floating point numbers. Now, we pass this quantization configuration while loading the model using Automodel for Causal LM class. Let's run this and load our model. It has started loading Safe Tensor. By the way, Safe Tensors is a safe and fast file format for storing and loading tensors. Typically, PyTorch model weights are saved or pickled into .bin file. However, pickle is not secure, and pickled files may contain malicious code that can be executed. Safetensors is a secure alternative to pickle, making it ideal for sharing model weights. In this case, we have three safe tensors downloading to the system, which have total size of 26 GB roughly. Once the three safe tensors are downloaded, now they are getting loaded. This is where the RAM is being highly utilized. It took 5 minutes to load the model and has consumed roughly 12 GB memory, in which only 8 GB of GPU memory is utilized. This is more economical in terms of resource consumption, compared to the 7 billion model without quantization. While we get the advantage of loading 13 billion model efficiently, there is a small to negligible drop in the quality of inferences. So bear that in mind and compare the response quality with and without quantization for your use case.
let's define a prompt. This particular prompt is asking for movie recommendations based on what the user already likes. Now let's evaluate our 4-bit quantized model. In the previous video, we have seen using transformers pipeline method for inferencing. This time, we use generate method of the model object. This method accepts input tokens generated from the user prompt. So, first let's convert our prompt to tokens. For that, we use encode method of the tokenizer. The encode function tokenizes the input string and converts it into numerical IDs. The return underscore tensors equals PT argument indicates that the output should be PyTorch tensors, which are used as inputs to the model. Now, let's pass the generated input IDs to the model.generate method. We also specify the maximum number of tokens the model is allowed to generate as output. In this case, it's set to 2048 tokens. And the temperature parameter is set to 0 0.6. Now let's wrap the model.generate method in a context manager with torch.nograd. This context manager is used in PyTorch to ensure that no gradients are computed while running this code block. In this context, the code is making a forward pass through the model without updating the model's parameters. After generating the text, the code uses the tokenizer again to decode the generated tokens into a human readable string. In this case, we are retrieving the first sequence from the generated outputs and passing it to the decode method. The skip special tokens argument tells the tokenizer to skip any special tokens, for example, padding tokens, that may have been generated during the decoding process. Let's print the response and see. Not bad. The quantized model is able to generate quality text. And if you see the resource consumption, the model has consumed only 14 gigabytes of memory. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video, we will see what are GGML, GGUF and GPTQ models and how to load them. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Please like and share the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to get updates on more tech insights. Stay tuned and keep exploring.